All right, we're going to keep moving. This time we've got a story problem. Uh, suppose the average monthly high temperature in degrees Fahrenheit in Detroit can be modeled by this function. And T stands for months, and if T equals 1, we've get, we get January. And we want to know in which month is the average high temperature 84. So one thing to note is that this is a function, we've been graphing functions previously, and so this 27 is the amplitude. And this 57 is sort of where we're centered around. That's the vertical shift, how we went up to 57. And so year-round, the middle temperature is 57, and then if you add or subtract 27 from that, that gets to the average high and average low. Um, this pi over 6, if you factor it out, is what the period is. And so if you think 2 pi divided by pi over 6, 2 pi times 6 over pi, and so the period is 12, which makes sense because we have 12 months in the year. So let's keep going. We're going to solve this. So we want to know when is it 84? Well, so we set the t equal to 84. So then we want to get the sign by itself, just like we've been doing. So least connected is the 57. So subtract 57 from both sides. And you get 27 equals 27 sine of pi over 6 t. Least connected to the sign, divide by the 27. If you divide by 27, you get 1 equals sine of... All right, so where is the sine value equal to 1? So in a sense, what we're going to be doing is inverse sine of 1 equals inverse sine of sine of pi over 6 t minus 2 pi over 3. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because I want you to see what happens on the inside of this stuff because so far we've just been saying okay well what makes this what um, so the inverse sine where's the sine value equal to 1 the y value is equal to 1 when you're straight up and down so when you're at pi over 2 so inverse sine of 1 is pi over 2 and you can type that into the calculator and get the same thing just an approximation inverse sine of sine of something is just equal to the something All right, and so if we add 2 pi over 3 now, we're solving for t, add 2 pi over 3, pi over 2 plus 2 pi over 3. If you think visually, it might be even easier than adding fractions, because pi over 2 is this, 2 pi over 3 is um, right here. Um, but let's, let's go ahead and add them. So we need a common denominator of 6, so I'm going to add 3 pi over 6, 3 over 3, and 2 over 2, plus 4 pi over 6. So I'm multiplying the left one by 3 pi over 3, sorry, 3 over 3, and the right one by 2 over 2. And then we get 7 pi over 6 is equal to pi over 6 times t. And so then we multiply by 6 over pi, multiply by the reciprocal, which is the same thing as dividing by the multiplied pi over 6. 6 cancels out, the pi cancels out, and you get t equals 7. So in what month is the average high temperature 84 degrees? In July. The average high temp. is 84 degrees. All right. Next one. So sine squared minus 4 sine of x plus 1. 
and we're solving between the interval 0 to pi. And so in, in approximate answers think it's about 0 to 3.14 or 159 so on and so forth. So we have sine squared. First thing I try to do is what we did prior and factor this. What adds to 1 sorry, what multiplies to 1 and adds to negative 4. Think of this as an x squared minus 4x plus 1. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that because, and I'm going to, instead of x, I'm going to use y just so we're using some substitution here. y squared minus 4y. But it doesn't factor. And so what we go to is either you could complete the square or you could use um, a equals 1, b equals negative 4, c equals 1, and use quadratic formula. x equals negative b plus or minus, all that. So we have the opposite of b plus or minus the square root. Negative 4 squared is 16 minus 4 times a times c, so 1 times 1, all divided 2 times a, which is 1. So we have 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 minus 4, which is 12, over 2. 4 plus or minus square root of 12 on the side here. Square root of 12, we can separate into 4 and 3 which is square root of 2, sorry, the square root of 4 is 2, and so I'm going to change that to 2 square root 3 divided by 2. And so I'm going to simplify that some more. Two, 4 divided by 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1, so we just have 2 plus or minus the square root of 3. So, approximation 2 plus the square root of 3, because these aren't exact answers. This is what y equals. And we said that y equaled the sine of x. So, 3.732 equals the sine of x. And the sine of x also equals 2 minus that, 2 minus the square root of 3 which is 0 0.268. And so how you solve this is by doing the inverse sine of 3.732, or the su inverse sine, yeah, 3.732, or if you want to use the exact answer, 2 plus the square root of 3. So inverse sine, 3.732, And I wasn't even thinking. I'm sorry, this is undefined. No solution. Because our sine value can never equal that. And then inverse sine of 2 minus the square root of 3. And I'm going to make sure I'm in radians because this is in radians. So you hit the second button. And so the first time I was in degrees, got 15. Second time in, I get 0.27. So inverse sine of 0.271. Sorry. 0.268 equals 0.271. And that's 0.271 radians. We're going to be in this first quadrant. Where else is the sine value? equal to 0 0.27, 0 0.268. Um, the sine value is also equal to it over here. So I'm going to do a little subtraction, and this is our 1, and I'm going to do pi minus 0 0.271, and get 2.87. So I'm going to just round these to the nearest hundredth of a radian.
2.87 and 0.27. And this one again, sine was over 1, and so it, we didn't have an answer. But we had two answers in between 0 and pi, and actually there weren't even any answers in the bottom here, and so we didn't even have to worry about it. And that's how you solve trig equations.